Hey guys, I'm Chad and this is travel hack video number 16. This is going to go into cards that you can use for business expenses, including paying taxes. Um, I'm going to go over the ways that I make and earn points using my business. And some of this might transfer to people, even if you don't have a business, but if you have a business, this is going to be the way that I make points. I'm going to show you my cards and how I make those points. What we have done recently is when, since we've got into the travel hacking, now I use credit cards to pay for all of my expenses, business expenses, business taxes, everything gets paid for with a credit card. Now, when you go into taxes, Taxes is something that's going to cost you a little bit extra to pay them. We pay estimated taxes. First, we get hit right when we do taxes at the beginning of the year, March or April, whenever we are able to complete our taxes. We have business taxes either, usually that we owe. Sometimes we may get some back, but if we owe them, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. When it comes around to it, every year as a business, we have to pay estimated taxes every quarter. So every quarter we have a pretty large sum of money that we have to get to the IRS for that year's taxes so that we pay them essentially like you do as, as an employee of a business. You act, it comes uh, An incremental amount comes out of each check during the year. And at the end of the year, if you paid enough to cover your liabilities to the IRS, then you break even. If you haven't paid enough, then you're going to owe the IRS money. If you've paid too much, then you'll get a tax refund. It works the same way with businesses. We pay estimated taxes quarterly, so we try and guess how much we're going to make during the year. And in my previous video, I alluded to that varies widely with my, my company. I could make a little amount this year, a lot more next year, and less the following year, it's it's all over the board. So what we do is we always base our taxes off of our previous year's income so that we don't get penalized by the IRS. When we do this, we come up with a number, a number that we have to pay quarterly to try and achieve the amount of taxes paid that we should have paid in the previous year. In doing so, we come up with that number that we have to pay quarterly. Let's say it's, I'm going to say it's $8,000 this year. Every quarter I have to pay $8,000. Now, I could either write the IRS an $8,000 check that will just come out of my bank account, or I could pay using a credit card. The IRS has some websites set up specifically to pay them with a credit card, and this should only be done if you know what you're doing, I, I highly advise against paying taxes with a credit card unless you can pay it off immediately. So if I don't have $8,000 in the bank ready to go to the IRS, I'm not going to pay them with a credit card. If you can't pay off the credit card immediately, you're going to rack up credit card interest payments and it, it's going to be not worth it in the end because credit card interest is really high. That's the worst way that you want to pay any debt that you have, especially debt that you can't afford. What this ultimately means is even though I could pay with cash, I'm going to pay with my credit card and the IRS has different rates that you can pay them at and they're different companies. The lowest one over recent years has been 1.8%. So if I add that up, Take 8,000 times 1.8%. 1.8% is going to go to the company that processes the charge. So they'll pay $8,000 and then they'll take an additional amount out of your card to pay for the processing fee of that, of that transaction. For an $8,000 charge, that would be $144. So in my case, I just recently, now that I have uh, estimated taxes that are supposed to be paid by the 15th of this month, I went out and found a bunch of business credit cards and I applied for them. They have spends that are totaling $7,000 that I need to put on them to get the bonus. So essentially, I'm going to pay with two credit cards. One has a $5,000 spend to get 75,000 American Airlines points. The other one has... 40,000 Alaska points after $2,000 spend. And it just came in the mail. We'll see what it is. 
Today we got our Alaska mileage plan card. I will now activate this card and pay a portion of my taxes for the 1.87% fee. And this one. Ready to pay my taxes now. If you're looking for credit cards, check out the description below. A lot of the ones that I use are down in that description. And if you use them, it helps out our channel. Now, overall, it's gonna cost a total of $144 to put $8,000 on both of these credit cards, but I'm gonna end up with 75,000 points on American and 40,000 points on Alaskan Airlines when I'm done. Now the question becomes, do these 115,000 points that I'm getting, I think it's 115,000, it's 75 plus 40. Yeah, 115,000 points have more value than $144 to me. And yes, they definitely do. It's gonna end up being $144 for those points. Those points I can turn around and put into a ticket that would normally cost me $15,000. Now, would I pay $15,000 for the actual seat I'm buying? No way. I don't have a budget that's going to go above a couple thousand dollars for a seat, but if I can pay $144 to get a first class seat that's worth $15,000, you can bet I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that option. And actually, in this case, it's going to get me a first class seat one way, pretty much anywhere in the world that I want to go. And it's going to have points left over. So again, I got my cards. I'm going to pay the $144. Now, another card that I use is my Business Inc card from Chase. Now with my Business Inc card, I get five times points on these categories. One of them is I pay my internet bill because it's a business expense because I make websites. That's what I do. I, I actually have a website that I run. It's an education website. I make money out of banner advertising that's on that website. I use the Chase Inc. card to pay for my internet and I also use it to pay for my cell phone bill. And those two are utilities that Chase Inc. pays five times bonus points for. So if I have a hundred dollar internet bill, I'll get 500 points if I use my Chase Inc. business card. All my business expenses I'll put on, on a business card, but it'll either be my Chase Inc., it'll be my Alaska business for my, my Alaska miles, or it'll be my AA card. Now Chase Inc. has a lot of categories that I use for my business that provide five times bonus points. So I'm gonna use my Chase Inc. for everything, pretty much, unless I'm going after a bonus like I am on these Alaska cards and the AA card, or the American Advantage card. In addition to these cards, I also have an Amex Hilton business card. Previous taxes, I've gotten a card. My most recent one is the Amex Hilton business card. and what this is, is it has a $95 fee and I've, with Amex cards, a lot of times the first fee I'll end up paying and then I get it waived the next time. So the bonus actually comes with the price of the card, but the benefits I end up getting off that card, I, I extend to two years for that one waived uh, annual fee. This one was $95. So when it comes around for it to renew, I'm going to call them up, tell them I like using the card, but um, I'm considering canceling it to get 
the fee, the annual fee waived. Sometimes they'll do it, sometimes they won't. If they don't, sometimes I'll end up canceling the, the card. But this card, the business card, is what I used on my previous tax bill to get the bonus right away. I paid my taxes with this. This card is one of the cards that I used. And I actually like this card and I may end up keeping it because it provides pro uh, free priority passes. And since I don't go on a ton of trips, uh, the priority passes allow me to get into lounges and random lounges everywhere. There's They have a network of, of hundreds of lounges around the world. So it provides 10 passes to get into them. I don't need a card that that I travel with all the time that, that would provide me unlimited visits to a priority pass lounge. So 10 visits is good enough for me. And it provides gold, Hilton Gold status, which gives you free breakfast, uh, sometimes early check-in. It gives you a few extra perks that you don't have unless you have a credit card with them. So I kind of like this card. I'm keeping it for an extra year to see if I'll use it. And using those points it, it, on hotel stays is excellent. So these are the cards that I'm currently using for business purposes and taxes. And like I said, every time business taxes come around, I'll try and find new business cards that I can pay those taxes with to get a huge bonus and pay off uh, pay off my taxes for that quarter. Now, when it comes around to when they're supposed to be renewed, if I can use the benefits that are on the card to make up the amount of the annual fee, then I'll keep the card. If I can get the annual fee waived, then I'll keep the card. If it the benefits are not good enough or they will not waive the fee, then the card gets canceled. Uh, so I don't keep cards if I'm not using them and they have an annual fee. So that's the way I work with my cards. And that's about it. Hope to see you in our next travel hack video. And thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for checking out the links in the description below. And give us a like if, if you like this information. Thanks again. Bye.